Alright, so I'm going to go over some of my good HLSL settings for the latest version of MAME. Go ahead and extract MAME. And I've had videos that I've done, um, but the videos that I've done were kind of out of date, and I've learned a lot since then. And some of the things I said in the videos, you know, just aren't, you know, the best way to go about doing it. So that's why I'm making this video. So after you've extracted it, open it up. And you'll see in the any folder that you got the presets folder. You go in there and you've got all these presets. Now in my old video, I told you to uh, modify your raster.any for your HLSL settings and stuff like that. But if you look in here, it's only got like a few things here. Direct3D, it's kind of a mess. And for the rest of it, it wants to use a main any that it puts somewhere else. And it's combining things. And the default colors in these suggested presets are really bad. And I've since found out the best thing you can do is really just delete all of this bull crap. You don't need any of it. You're better off without it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot easier on you because you're not going to have to worry about bad presets on every single setting, every color, every little thing. So after you delete all that crap, go ahead and run MAME once. <clears throat> now it takes a little while for it to load up on the first go. Um, but once you it loads up, you're just going to go to default game options and change the basic default game options the way you like them. And that will generate your MAME any in your any folder presets. Right now it's blank because we deleted all the crap. But after we do some stuff here and apply, we're going to get MAME any. So properties, pause brightness all the way up, direct 3D mode, and then advanced tab, triple buffering. Some people say with triple buffering you get some input lag. But I play fighting games and I don't detect any input lag, so you should be good to go. The miscellaneous tab, you don't need it to sleep when possible. You do want it to skip the game info. And you want to crop your artwork. Hit apply, hit OK. Now you've got your main any over here. And you open it with notepad. And it's just all very default. It's not set up right. I'm going to leave the settings in the comment section. Alright. But. Um, you know, basically all you gotta do. I've made some. Gee whiz, I'm loud. All you gotta do is come down and you're gonna copy all the settings from my comment under this video. Not necessarily under this video that I'm doing here for this demonstration, but just under the video that you're actually watching right now. And this is how you copy it all. You just copy all this crap carefully. Okay. After that. You know, you just select it all in your main menu, hit paste, let it overwrite everything, file, save, close it. You don't want to copy it all in here, you don't want to copy it all here, you want to copy it inside the main menu. Okay? After you've done that, you're good to go and you can go ahead and launch your game. <clears throat> now I'm just going to go ahead and go through some of these things and explain it. Turn the volume down on the game because it's going to be kind of loud at the beginning. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hit the tilde key. Alright, that's the key right above tab. If you start to go up, you'll see all these NTSC things. I'm going to go down and start by going down. These are uh, audio settings. Don't worry about that. Screen brightness default. Screen contrast default. My screen gamma is not default because on my particular monitor, my gray, my blacks kind of look gray, right? So like the really dark areas that should be dark and crisp kind of look a little gray and foggy. So to get it just right for my particular monitor, I go with 7. Now on your monitor, it's going to be different, I'm sure. Everybody's monitor is different when it comes to that. I've got multiple monitors in my own house, and each one of those are different. So screen gamma, find out what gives you your crispy blacks. Alright, moving on. Horizontal stretch and position, vertical stretch position, you leave default. Um, shadow mask tile mode screen now I'm gonna crank up the shadow mask amount so that we can see what shadow mask really looks like so that I can explain it better 
Okay, that's all the way up. Now, if you're watching this video in 1080p 60 full screen, you might be able to see the little screen door effect, the shadow mask, the little tiny little effect going on. It might be very hard to see, but hopefully you can see it. Um, it's most prominent like in the life bars or in the pink of that background of the elephant thing. Anyways, if you go to tile mode and you go to source, notice how crazy it is. Okay, it doesn't work properly for this application. So what we do is, you know, we use the screen mode. Now the pixel X and Y counts are very important. Now I read on a MAME forum by like a MAME developer that he recommended 12 and 12 with raster games, with like games like Street Fighter or whatever. And if you use different settings, some of them are absolutely ridiculous. Some of them look good, but they're just a little bit wrong. And the 12 does seem to work well. Now when you go to the Y and you had 12, it seems like it's okay, but depending on what stage you're on, like if you're on a stage that has a bright white blue sky background, you can see these funny little horizontal greenish lines every now and then that kind of go across with the 12. And I found that by going to 6, it's perfectly even looking everywhere. It just looks great. Now that's on mine. Different monitors, you know, try something else. But I'm going with the 12 count X and the 6 count Y. So now we know what Shadow Mask does. So we can go ahead and turn that back down. You're of course, not going to use that full blast amount. I turn it down until I can still make it out. I can still see it, but it's not too obtrusive. It's not in the way. It's not overdone. For me, that's about 0.10. I might could go as high as 0.20 if I wanted to see it more easily, but I still can see it at 0 0.10. 0 0.15 might be a happy medium for people who kind of want that. 0.10 works for me. All right, going down. The offsets you want to leave zero. And these size, very important that the UV size are at 0.5. When you start trying other sizes, it's nasty. So again, shadow mask is very important. The pixel X count 12, pixel Y count 6, U size 0.5, V size 0.5, offsets zero. All right, moving on. Quadric distortion, it gives you kind of a weird bulbous in the center effect. I don't like it, so I turn it down. The cubic distortion amount, I have it at 0.10. I, it mainly handles the corners more, similar to the quadric, but it mainly handles the corners more. And I'll show you why I use it. So let's go and turn it off and go to distorted corner. Now look up at the top left where it says one player. Now if I have my distorted corner all the way off, I can fully see where it says one player. But the corner doesn't look proper. On an actual arcade monitor, there's an intrusive bezel that goes over that corner. And I can show you a photo later. So anyways, basically, so you need to have a distorted corner to make it look proper. But you don't want to be missing that one player that's kind of blocked now. So when you go up to cubic distortion, move that out to 0.10, boom, you got your one player back. Or the image is back in place properly. And you get the benefit of having that nice curved appearance. So moving on, rounded corner 0.5, if you go on to zero, the corner becomes just nasty and sharp, fake looking, so you get 0.5. Same thing with smooth border 3, if you're all the way off, things kind of look kind of fake and too sharp at the edge, 0.3 is just enough, anything more is kind of overkill with these settings, 0.3 is the happy number. Reflection amount, if you want it to look like, you know, you're playing on a glass screen with a, a light bulb behind you or something, you can go right ahead. You know, I'm not using it, per, you know, myself, but maybe if I'm in the mood one day and I want to pretend I'm sitting in an arcade room that has a lot bright light behind me, sure, why not? But I'm not using it. I'm not using this one. Scan line amount, I recommend, you know, to try it for personal taste. If you have it all the way full blast, you're probably going to want some brightness offset, which is a few down. You'll see brightness offset. Pump that up, it helps with the dimming effect of having scanline full blast. See how it brightens it up? Now, me personally, scanline brightness I've noticed like it reduces the clarity of white objects or light skin tones. So I don't want to have to use it, which means I don't want my total overall scan line to be maxed out. And I kind of prefer to put my scan line down to about halfway. If you don't like that particularly, you can change it. I think this is a nice image. You can still make out the scan line. It's not too dim. You got good clarity. And these overall scan line scale, individual scan scale, you leave them default. Scan line variation default. 
the brightness scale default. The offset, just use the offset if you're using heavy scan lines to help brighten it back up. The jitter amount, some people like it causes eye strain for me and I, I'm not, I don't really feel like I need to see the monitor have a bit of jitter so I leave mine off. The hum bar, I don't think the effect is done very well in this game, it just, see it makes a big dark area, I don't know what's going on with the hum bar so I don't use it. Defocus, this is like if you bought a TV from the store and you got it home for the first time and you're going to set up the sharpness. You turn it all the way off, look how grainy it looks, it's not very attractive start going up it looks too blurry so basically just dial it in until it's just right I got both of them on 1.0 I could put them both on 0.9 or 0.8 but 1.0 works for pretty much all my games alright linear convergence this is like color bleeds you can now that if you did like I said and you deleted all the presets like the raster innies and the vector innies you're gonna have nice default color stuff and you can just leave them all they're nice correct default values you don't have to worry about them. Uh, the convergences, the outputs, they're all fine. Keep on going. Color saturation. I turned mine down a bit because I feel like when I'm all the way up, it's like more like a Super Nintendo or something. I don't know. I just feel like it looks more realistic to me personally with it down to like 0.90. If you like yours, you know, with more color bleed, go ahead and crank it up a bit. Um, the signal offsets can be fun to play with if you want to, oh my monitor has been left out for 20 years in the sun you know or something <laughs> I've been smoking cigarettes around my monitor for 10 years if you want to play around with these you can play around with these but you know the the normal neutral setting zero um, keep on going these are all default colors now I turned my signal exponent blue down by a little bit just kind of blew it up a little because I just have a feeling that the default you know, just a little too much yellow going on, and I think most monitors I remember and that I look at have slightly less of that yellowy green and more blue. So I did do that one, and that's very discreet, and I think it looks a little better. The floor is on flat zero because when you add in, it's basically just turning black into green or black into blue, but you, you lose your true blacks. I don't like it. Persistence, that's just how long it takes for a color to change to the next color, and it gives you ghosting, so I don't like them. And the bloom blend mode, you don't really use darken, you use the brighten. The bloom scale, I use 0.1 because if you have it all the way off, it's too flat and lifeless. If you turn it up too high, you get a lot of great glow effect, but you know, you know me personally, I don't like losing. Like, look at the name Ryu up there, the R, how it's just washed out. And if you back it all the way off to where there's no bloom, it's still like not that clear, but I just move it up until it starts to look too glowy and washed out, and for me that's point one. You know, I don't I feel like I'm not losing too much clarity with the point one. Um, but if you like a lot more you can use more. The overdrives I leave alone. The levels I've customized, but it'll be in my any file. I'm not going to bother going them all over here. The NTSCs, you just leave them alone. They're all just, it's a big mess. NTSC effect. Here's the NTSC effect. Turn it on for you real quick. See how crazy it looks? Now you could tweak them around, but I don't even bother. Turn them off. And that's it. That's my settings. So, anyways. Go ahead and leave that. And it also looks good on games like, you know, Mortal Kombat 2 and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, Shang Tsung doesn't laugh like that on the original Mortal Kombat 2 Tournament Edition. And I got the noob Cybot color. Uh oh. <laughs> I wonder if I can do the Kintaro. I think you gotta hold like low punch for like 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna kinda milk the clock for 30 seconds. Mm, that should be enough time. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> 